There are people who build on constant so much until when change comes in like flood, mm. they are not able to remove their feet from the place mm. they have always been. All the time in this world, situations arise that make you want to learn. Renew your mind. Exactly. Renew your, your thought processes mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you cannot be doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's such a pleasure to come to your screens once again. And we thank God that he has kept us since the last time we were together. I am trusting and hoping that we are all well kept by the Lord. Again, this is Deborah Generation Show coming to you all the way from Maxland Hotel. We are privileged to be in your table rooms, in your dining rooms, in your bedrooms. Uh, just to be your companion for this evening as we have conversations that we encourage one another and inspire each other to become that which God has called us to be. And as we had mentioned last time, we are looking at the portrait of Ruth uh, in a series that we began last time uh, about stepping out in faith or stepping out to the unknown, having courage to make the move and stepping out in courage and in faith. And we looked at the character Ruth and we looked at how uh, the relationship between Ruth and Naomi and we looked at her story, how after the, the loss of the husband, uh, they had lost their husband, they had lost their father-in-law and yet she committed to walk with Naomi, who was the mother-in-law, to a land which was unknown to her, to a future which was unknown to her. And we see how God walked with them and how God finally made everything beautiful in his time. And therefore today we continue with that series. And today the question that I would want to pose is, what does stepping out in faith means to you? What does, that, what does that mean to you? Does it mean you need to let go of some things? Does it mean you have to let go of the comfort zone? Does it mean that you have to have a, a, a higher a, and stronger belief in the plan of God? What does it really mean to you? And to me, that is the question I want us to ask ourselves tonight. And therefore, it's a great pleasure once again to welcome my friend and my mama, Pastor Miriam. Karibu sana. Asante sana. It's always Nashkuru. a pleasure to have you in this show. Like uh, now, we have become the inseparable twins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah. team that plays and we'll win yes. ultimately. Yes. Yeah, we thank God for our coming together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't take it for granted. Amen. It's, it's, it's God who ordains, like yeah. we said last time about mm -hmm. Ruth and Naomi, that God ordained that these things would happen for a cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are here for a cause too. Great. To learn Great. and unlearn mm -hmm. and help others do the same. Uh, my, my question to you today, I would want to pose a question. Have you ever come to a place where you are forced to step out to the unknown? You are forced to step out not knowing what is ahead, but by faith you chose to believe that there could be greater things ahead and you stepped out of your comfort zone? Exactly. Uh, my, my, my training is in accounting. Mm -hmm. And one time I used to work. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk and we say I preach, people think that's all you do. I have a training in accounting and I used to work for an organization. And at some point I realized I had to quit. And it's like some things were not quite favorable. And the longer I stayed, 
the more I felt uneasy and like I wasn't adding value to my life. Mm -hmm. And at some point I just said, I'm quitting today. And the director's PA told me, Miriam, you can't quit. And I said, it is now or never. never. Somebody else from the family told me, you can't quit. And mm -hmm. I said, no, I am getting out of this. I have to move to something else. Mm -hmm. And I moved out from work and then spent some few months at home and then found myself in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I came to Nairobi. And mm -hmm. when I was here, in, precisely in Kahawa West, mm -hmm with my husband who mm -hmm. was working then, mm -hmm. I didn't have some work to do. You mm -hmm. can imagine, mm -hmm. you're there, coming from we're waiting. You're coming from working and having your you're money. Earning your own money. And then here you are, you don't even know where a coin is going to come from. And while there, the Lord helped me to know that he needed me to do ministry. Mm -hmm. And a lot of talking was done to me, mm -hmm. not just talking, prophetic talking. Mm -hmm. And I followed. And here I am, the rest is history, as mm. they say, mm -hmm. yes. How was that journey for you in your mind? Did you battle with the questions of, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Uh, how, how, how am I even supposed to go about it? Where do I start? Mm -hmm. How was that for you? The job quitting bit, I had to get out. I pressure was mounting, mm. like, uh, I just didn't know what to do about what. Mm. And sometimes pressure makes you to decide. Mm. Or if you're not careful, pressure breaks, breaks you down. Mm. There are those who, when issues are bad, break down, mm. get into depression and mm. that kind of thing. Mm. But there are those who find an opportunity in pressure. Mm. And then they move, they move out, they jump out of the situation, mm -hmm. land, Wherever you land, you're supposed now to pick yourself up from there. And so that's what I did. And as I'm telling you, I was in the world where I used to have my paisley. Mm -hmm. Now here I am without a paisley. Mm. Here I am, I have to say there is no salt, mm -hmm. there is no cooking oil. Mm. I need to do my hair mm. and those kind of things. Mm. And you have to wait for someone to go to their pocket and decide this is the match. You, you, you can, can get have, for now, yeah. for now. Mm. and uh, I, I moved on and then realized I needed to do something else. Mm. And at some point I got into business mm -hmm. yeah, because I remember last time I mentioned I'm in business, mm. I'm preaching, mm. I am training mm. and I am going to school. Mm. And so I got into a small business mm -hmm. and then God helped me to, to, to have the tenacity mm -hmm. and to be resilient in that small business and move on with life until I was able to do my foundation mm -hmm. and then continue with the business. Ah, great to hear that, that yes. you did not just step out, but you stepped out with clarity Mm -hmm. and understanding that this is what God uh, wants you to do. And you kept on moving and you kept being active also by adding value into the society because mm -hmm. uh, for everything that you do in, in your business, I imagine you have employed uh, someone or some people and uh, therefore you are adding value to, to the society and to the community. Mm -hmm. And just looking back at the portrait that we have been studying, mm. uh, Ruth. Yes. And the action that she took to follow Naomi mm -hmm. into a land that she did not know what was to take place there, yeah. what was to become of her life there. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that have stood out for you that maybe we can draw lessons from uh, that Ruth made that decision by, 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 by the virtue of her making that decision of following Naomi? Uh, what lessons can we draw from, from that? First lesson is selflessness, self Less Ness. mess. Mm -hmm. I think for me, self selflessness stands out for Naomi. Mm -hmm. Not Naomi, but for Ruth. Mm -hmm. She's like, she's not herself. She's dead. She doesn't exist. 
she doesn't know where she's going, but she gets out. So that is to mean she doesn't belong to herself anymore. She wants to go out and serve someone else. She is that unselfish woman mm -hmm. who wants to see the life of another being bettered at her own expense. Wow. Do you get that? Mm. So she's a young girl dealing with an old woman. She sees a gap in this issue or this matter mm -hmm. and decides, I have no value of myself. I would rather pour my value to get someone mm. more value. And so that's what I'm calling selfless. Yes. And that is so powerful because I strongly believe that there is such great power in serving. Yes. That there is such beauty when you serve others. Mm -hmm. um, there is a glory that God bestows on you mm. and you, 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 you just start growing and glowing and just soaring in his glory. Yeah. So service, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't mean that you have to do something that just benefits you, but you can actually start from a point of serving. Yeah. By serving others, that means God beautifies you through service. Yes, and I'm just thinking about the Red Sea. Mm. <laughs> As we talk about serving and mm. selflessness mm. and giving your life to others. Mm -hmm. and not the Red Sea, but the Dead Sea. Mm. The Dead yeah, Sea. Dead sea yeah. It is said that the Dead Sea only receives. And that's why it is so dead. But we see Ruth coming from a point of death and grief and deciding, apart from that I'm grieving, mourning, and I don't know the way forward, mm. I'll give my life to someone else. Mm. Cross-cultural. Mm. She moved out of her known culture. Mm. She moved out to the unknown mm. and walked just as selflessly as we would say. Mm. Moving from the Moabites, going to the Jews' culture mm. was a whole deal. Mm. She needed to learn many yeah, things yeah. and as we commonly say here, and learn others. Mm. She had to quit the gods of Moab mm. and go and embrace, embrace the God of Israel, mm. Jehovah. Mm. And so that is like a selfless bit yeah. where you say, whatever I had, I give it away. Mm. I let it go. Mm. And then I move on. Mm -hmm. Like Paul says, the things I used to do, I don't I do don't them. Do them they are not valuable mm. anymore. The, the, my mother's culture, my father's culture, my brother's, my, lean, my alignment, mm. I am going to leave my alignment mm. and get to be an alien, not knowing what I'm going to expect. Wow. That is it. Mm. Mm. Wow. So faith or stepping out in faith sometimes requires us to be selfless, to no yeah. longer look to ourselves, but to look outside, to look yeah. without yeah. so that we can be... Uh, we can be people of impact also yes. as, 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 as we step out mm -hmm. there in faith. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Uh, uh, I, I look at her and I'm thinking uh, she was in a season of pain. Of course. And loss. A great loss. But yet chose to forget that and forge forward. Mm -hmm. So sometimes... Uh, I look at, uh, I, I, I like to look at Naomi. Naomi allowed her pain and sorrow to define her. Mm -hmm. Because at some point she said, uh, uh, call, call me Mara. Mm -hmm. Because Jehovah or oh God has inflicted, has inflicted me with pain. Mm -hmm. And therefore sometimes we like to sit down and, and wallow and say, Woye, look at me, I cannot, I, this died, mm -hmm. I lost my mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. I, my house got on fire, I lost my children. And we like to stay there in that uh, and, and we forget that there is greater that that is just a chapter of your life mm -hmm. and you need to move on to the next page. Exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, w what is your thought about a woman who right now is going through pain, is going through loss, is going through, and she has allowed herself to sink into that, uh, that season and allowed that season to define her life entire identity or to define her? Well, there is lack of focus 
because you know even when you go to the field you're playing football or you you're running mm-hmm. there was those things that would want to disfocus you and mm-hmm. move you from the race move you from the course and in this life those things will always be there just like they were there in Naomi's life Naomi comes down to Moab from Bethlehem mm. of Judah. Mm. Bethlehem is the house of bread. Yes. Judah is the place of place praise. Of praise. Mm. So there is enough food and mm. then when you have eaten enough we go and praise mm. our God. Mm. But now she starts moving downwards mm. like back sliding mm. sliding backwards. Mm. And so the focus is removed. The point of focus is removed from its usual mm. place the comfort the place. comfort place and so she finds herself not being able to relate with the change situation mm. which happens to many of us at some point because we are so focused and we think we are this mm. and things can change mm. it's going to be this way like we say last time constant there are people who build on constant so much until when change comes in like flood mm. they are not able to remove their feet from the place mm. they have always been imagine like you are in a place you have always been very comfortable mm. we were talking about budalangi mm. this place water comes in goes away mm. and people are always they are serikali saidia yes it's like naomi would have said serikali saidia But this new girl here comes and says, "Man, I would rather try new horizons. Mm. Let me try new ventures. Mm. Let me be focused because I think my future is going to be big elsewhere." Mm. And uh, this wallowing and this death of men doesn't have to stop me from here. I need to focus forward and get into new places, meet new people, learn new things. So there is the focus bit of it. Mm. Yes. So we are saying first be selfless. Yes. Think outside your yourself. Yes. Secondly, we are saying step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Shift focus. Yes. Shift mindset. Mm-hmm. Start renew renew your mind. Exactly. Renew your your thought processes mm-hmm. uh, because uh, you, you cannot be doing the same thing over and over again. and expect different results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've been wallowing and seated in that situation and you've just been complaining and murmuring about your life not changing, maybe it's about time you start thinking differently. Maybe it's about time that your mind shifts into something different and you put yourself out there not thinking only about yourself but think about the bigger picture. Exactly. Wow, wonderful. Then, uh, apart from that there's something else. We must be willing to learn new things. Mm. You must be willing to learn. All the time in this world situations arise that make you want to learn. Like if you get involved in an accident and you break your legs, mm-hmm. you can't stand as usual. You must learn a new thing. you must find yourself in a new culture mm. that you have to adopt a new living style mm. and so for for Ruth she is coming from pain mm. having lost her breadwinner mm. then she is coming from pain having to move with a sickly old woman mm. without knowing where they're going to have a source of income mm. she's coming from pain and leaving her father and mother mm. and being joined not now to a man who can give her security mm. but following a woman who is also trying to go and look if her security is still there <gasps> the place she left so many years mm. with elimelech elimelech oh my father is king you know mm-hmm. and then there they go wow and something else that i find so so captivating about ruth is the 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 way she would listen mm-hmm. to the mother in law's instruction she yeah. was humble enough to get the instructions from the mother in law and follow them through I, there is this scenario where she was being told to there was this setup that they had they were having 
uh, a meal, mm -hmm. uh, breaking bread, and she was told that after this man has eaten and she will, he will go to a certain point and rest, you go and lie at his feet. Mm -hmm. And when he asks you, who is this? You say, it is I, your maiden servant. Eh? And she followed exactly as the mother-in-law had instructed her. And in that process, that is when Boaz thought of how he was going to actually marry Ruth by presenting a case to the other kinsman and saying, if you want to you, redeem. You, to redeem, yes, mm -hmm. you, you will have also to get the wife off. But when he was presented with that, and that no, 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 you go on and redeem them yourself. Mm -hmm. So we see the, the, the humility that she had to follow through instruction. So sometimes when we isolate ourselves in that space uh, of thinking we are, we, I'm going through all this, I don't, I don't have this to step out or I'm not enough to step out, sometimes we, we get so deep into it that we don't hear. There is an art in hearing where you submit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes we are not keen to hear because we have not submitted to, to receive the delivery of the message. Wow. You know what submission means? You suppress anything else and allow whatever is the major to operate. And so for Ruth, there is an element also of submission. So the power really is yeah. not only in hearing. No, no, no. You can hear, but if you're not submissive, you won't act towards. Wow. The feedback you give upon receiving the mm, message mm. is like, mm, does it bother me? Mm. But she, it bothered her because she submitted. And I'm sure she must have submitted to this man. Mm. And uh, as we have said, she must have learned the way things are done mm. in this new culture. Mm. So she is translating cross-culturally. Mm. And that requires submissions too. Like you're leaving your people mm. and entering into something that you don't know, mm. into a new culture. Mm. And you're going to leave the gods and go and submit to a god, you know. It all required her to be submissive enough to learn and embrace. Mm. Because in submission, that's where women are able to embrace many other things, including change, including change. Mm. Because, you know, like we said some time back, some time back we said that in another forum, we mm. said like when we get married or we move into these new settings, mm. families, mm. these are not our brothers and our sisters mm. and our fathers and our mothers. Yes. This is a different setting mm. where you come in and you find things are done mm. In a different way, yes. And even having to submit to the level of she's bowing before Boaz or she's lying down at his feet. Mm. You know, there's a song we say, bow down and worship you. Mm. And we lie down there and we wait for his command. Mm. And that's exactly what she did. She submitted, which is what most of us women are called to do. Mm. There's a learning we must do every mm. time mm. to submit. Wow. Yes. Wow. Even submitting to the mother-in-law. Oh, yes. The command of go, uh -huh. glean, green. Yes, yes. Yeah, when he tells, dress this way, do yes. this, yes. go, it's all submission. Yes. Go lie there, it's all submission. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. Wow. Yeah. And right now, I just feel like, let's talk to a woman. Mm -hmm. Please talk to a woman who needs to step up. Mm -hmm. Talk to a woman who needs to arise. Step yeah. Talk to a woman who needs to, to come out of whatever that situation is that she mm -hmm. feels mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. she, she's sinking deeper and, uh, and, and she needs to step out there to put herself out there so that she can have a, a renewal of the mind, uh, a new beginning. Because new beginnings just don't happen. Yeah, yeah. New beginnings happen when we have taken the action to move, to make the step, to make that step of faith. Yes. Please talk to that woman. Wow. One of the things I feel I should strongly say is that 
issues, problems come to people. Mm. And we are all victims. We are all victims of challenges of a kind. And it is important for someone to have an open mind that tells them anything is about to happen. And in case the, the unexpected comes your way, mm. it is sometimes so striking, yes, it hurts, it tears, it brings sickness. But we cannot continue to cry there down. We must get out there and look for solution. Mm. Get team, mm. get team building. Like you see what Ruth is doing. She wants to be in this winning team mm. that looks is like it's done. And she knows this surely is going to be a winning team. Mm. So we cannot dwell all of our life on something that has hurt us. Mm. We must realize when time to move to another level and heal has arised. Mm. And so we get and venture into that and mm. flow by that mm. so that we are able to make sense of life mm. because as much as we want to cry that bad things have happened mm. we are likely to be not the first person to suffer mm. so we have a whole scope of learning mm -hmm. we have a whole scope of people willing to help us mm -hmm. we have a whole direction to move towards mm -hmm. and uh, the sky can be the limit mm -hmm. when we are willing to let go of the past mm -hmm. and pray like, mm. I am in ashes, but I know my beautiful fire yes. is waiting to give me security, mm. to give me good new oil, mm. to make me dressed up in new apparatus mm. and to show me forth mm. to the nations of the world wow. as the one who remained resilient mm. to the end. Amen. Yes. And thank you so much for just being part of this journey and uh, just inspiring and, 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 and encouraging a woman that you don't have to stay in that space, that you feel sorry for yourself, that you feel you're not enough, that you feel um, everything is working against me. Uh, maybe as we have said here that you need to renew your mind, you need to step out and be selfless. You need to, to, to get out of your comfort zone and try some change, something different for a change. But step out in faith nevertheless. And next time we will be having such an inspiring story of a woman who dared to step out into an unknown land and do something that she could have never imagined, something that was outside her profession, something that she had never even gone to school to study about. But she went on and stepped out in faith, and today we celebrate her amazing achievement. So look out for the next episode because it's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing, so do not... Do not miss out on this next episode. Thank you very much for being our good company. And I pray and I hope that you are blessed, that you are inspired, that you are encouraged. So see you next time. God bless you.